Hey, everybody, as uh, we get started here on a Thursday, I got a text yesterday from Jason Lawhead, our buddy, the comedian who is going to be performing this weekend at the Comedy Store in uh, La Jolla. He's, he's headlining. Just got done working with Louis C.K. down in Tampa, which I think is really cool. Um, so listen, so Jason Lawhead's going to join us, and he sent me a text yesterday. He goes, hey, what's the promo code at Tori Holistics this week? <laughs> and I was like, dude, it's good news. That's it. Just good news. 20% savings when you use the promo code. And so I think he had gotten home from Tampa, had himself a nice little payday working with Louis CK and was like, you know what I need right now? Some Tory Holistics. And then when he said, what's the promo code? I said, good news. And he said, you're darn right. It's good news. Like, yeah, it is 20% savings. Hey, when you're there, my friends here at HVGC, the Hellman Valley Growers Company, former U.S. Marines that are putting 100% of their profits right back into medical research and helping veterans deal with PTSD through cannabis rather than pills. So Tory Holistics, 20% savings, use our promo code good news and check out the HVGC family of products. Hey, I want to send out shout outs to the Total T Clinic. I get a lot of guys who send me emails who say, dude, I never really figured out or like, I just figured I was getting old. Like, why am I tired? Why don't I feel the same way? Why don't I feel as strong? Why don't I feel as motivated to exercise? Why am I not as interested as I once was in the bedroom? I'm just getting old. It's not that you're getting old. It's just that you are gaining in age and your testosterone levels are likely dropping. And when that happens, you don't feel the same. But when you balance those two things out, you know, you can't avoid getting a little bit older, but when you balance out your testosterone and you get it to where it should be, you're going to be so much healthier, you know, feel so much better. And you're going to send me an email saying, thank you. Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. And I want to send out a shout out today to SMS Global. SMSglobal.com has been our texting partners. So for those of you that every day receive our text messages and they tell you, hey, we're, we're on the air and here's a link to the YouTube channel. And um, this is all powered by SMS Global. And I'll tell you right now that if you're in business and business is starting to come back and you're looking to reach your audience, look, I'd like to tell you that buying and, and, and advertising with us is great. It is, but you want to reach everybody and get people to open everything. I can tell you right now, emails, I've stopped sending emails. The open rate is like 10%, you know, SMS global text rate is like 95%. So listen, whatever business it is that you're in, you need to reach your people, reach them on their phones by text message because they open the texts. And when you use a text message service, these are the folks that we're using SMS global, SMS global.com. Let's start it out on a Thursday. Hey, great friends on a Thursday, Kaplan and crew taking to like every known platform to man, essentially, like is, as we're getting on right now, there's the 1090 radio listeners. Monday of this upcoming week, there's going to be cable television viewers. We'll explain that to you later today. We're actually making the announcement later today as to where the radio show slash podcast slash YouTube video stream show and all the audio podcast platforms. We're going to actually announce a little bit later on today, a new partnership that's going to put the show on cable television every night from 7 p.m to 8 p.m. So stay tuned for that, okay? So wherever you are, radio, eventually TV people, YouTubers, home base, YouTube. Look down below. Alex posted the Browner hot take brackets. Click on those, leave your vote, get involved in the conversation because next week when a winner is crowned, somebody's going to win that $100 gift card to Tory, okay? So just make sure you're getting involved here. Come over into the chat, comment down below, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care. Okay. Just do a beautiful thing. And for all you audio podcasters this weekend, when you're catching up, make sure you tweet me at Scott Kaplan so that we can talk about what it is you're listening to over the weekend as you're catching up. Okay. First thought before I say hello to the fellas. First thought, I saw Magic Johnson yesterday getting his COVID vaccination in downtown LA with the mayor and some other dignitary types, Arsenio Hall. Okay. Arsenio's hot again. 
coming to America had like, you know, like a two or three day shelf life. You know, like I know people that haven't seen coming to America, the, the new one. And they're like, oh yeah, this weekend I'm going to check out coming to America. I'm like, no, you're not. If you didn't see coming to America in like the first two, three, four days, you're probably not going to watch it until maybe one day you're sitting around because you finally found a gap of time in your life to actually just sit on the couch for a few minutes. And you'd be like, oh, oh, you know what? I never saw, you know what? I will watch that. But if you didn't see it in the first few, first few days, you're probably not going to watch it. But Arsenio Hall, Magic Johnson, and Danny Trejo, who is like, you, you know, you see him and you're like, who's that? I mean, I know who he is. I know he's been in a million movies or TV commercials, but I don't know. Like, I, you know how many Rams games I've done where he's always on the sideline? In fact, every Rams game I've ever done, he's always been on the sideline. So Magic got his vaccination. And you know what I say? Way to go, Magic. Way to be a leader yet again in the community. When I say the community, I don't mean a specific. I mean the whole one, the big one, the big community, everybody. You know, sometimes when guys don't, or here, let me be very specific. When LeBron James said, I'm not going to tell you if I'm getting the vaccination, to me, there were plenty of people around the country that were like, you know, I'm not really sure if I want to get it either because I'm a little skeptical about it. And when LeBron said that, people were like, if he's not getting it, I'm not getting it. You know, if he got it, I'll get it. Well, when Magic got it, I know it made me feel like I've already seen Magic. Man, that guy, there's something special going on inside that body. If Magic Johnson can get it and be good, I'm good. So now I'm even more excited to get the vaccination. Yes, I am. Yeah, glad to be obese. Thank you, CDC. Thank you, BMI. Glad to be obese and be eligible to get the vaccination. All right, ladies and gentlemen, say a good day. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time it is that you're watching or listening, to my man, representing the 805. He is hermano numero uno, Oxnard, California's favorite son, Ventura County in La Casa and representing, ladies and gentlemen, Grande Alejandro Padilla. Hola, hermano, como esta? I feel like I should be offended by what you just said, to be honest. Why? I mean... I got my shot. Yeah. You didn't say, oh, now I should get mine. No, I was kind of waiting to see what happened. Johnson, to you. A Magic Johnson? Yeah. Was, yeah, dude. I was I waiting to see. Like, waiting you to just see. like to hurt people's feelings on this show, don't you? Really? Like, no invite to dinner. Oh, I don't care that that Padilla got the shot. I'll wait till Magic Johnson gets the shot. Like, this is just offensive, dude. It just it hurts wow. my feelings. I don't even want to continue the show today. That, that wow. really hurts my feelings. Wow. Just, and that wasn't even where I was start. I was in a damn good mood until you said it. Magic Johnson got his shot now, so now I really want to get mine. You're that guy, huh? Celebrity endorsements work on you, huh? <laughs> not friends. Not friends. <laughs> not close. Not no. I'm not a friend. Not close coworkers that you talk to for four hours a day. But celebrity endorsements. You're the guy. That's why press conferences need to happen when Magic Johnson gets his vaccine in Arsenio Hall and Machete. I get it. You're that guy. You, I, I you, you know you I didn't you don't know think... people existed. You, you don't think you don't think that that's why that was done yesterday? You oh, don't I think... know exactly why it was done. I just didn't know. And I've asked this question so many times. Who are the people where a celebrity endorsement works on? Now I know the answer is at Scott Kaplan. Yay. I'm not alone. Just so you know. I know, but I've asked this question on this show when all these during the election season all year last year, we're talking about, well, oh, this guy's uh, voting for Trump and this guy's voting for Biden. It's like, who cares? Who, like, who cares what Brett Favre says or who cares what The Rock says? And, and then now I know there are people out there. Like, I, I really have not met some. I even put the question on side a long time ago. Do celebrity endorsements alter the way you think? Well, and a lot of people were like, hell no. Let me just say something, because I think you're you're taking this way, way, way beyond where I was trying to do. And it's actually kind of bumming me out. Like, like in like as as funny as things were, you have just completely bummed me out. Here's what I'm saying: Way to go, Magic! Nice job, man. When you're famous, so and, offended. I'm the well, offended one. Yeah, I know, no, I'm, no, 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 no. Now I'm you're offended. Taking my, you're taking my showmanship out of my first thought. What are you no, doing no. over here? Now I'm don't, offended. Don't, don't knock the winds out of my sails, sir. I'm offended. <laughs> 
Now I'm offended. Okay, here's here's a, I'm gonna reset because you're getting legitimately upset. I was making a joke, and now you're getting legitimately upset because oh, wait a second, I was making a joke. Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson has more sway on Scott Kaplan than I do. That's my original thought. Well, let me tell you why that is. Let let's think about this for a moment. Magic Johnson, what year was it where he told the world he was HIV positive? What year was like that? 92 or something? 91? Think, I don't think know. about that, dude. That's 30 years ago. 1992. That's 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. has, there, has there been anybody who's more of a poster boy for, I can beat anything? You know? Yeah, I don't even know why he got the shot. So, so now he goes, hey, I can beat anything. I, I can beat AIDS. I can beat HIV. And guess what? I'm getting the vaccination. So when I see Magic get it, because remember, there are a lot of people who got a little scared a couple weeks ago with Marvin Hagler. And they're like, well, no. Tommy Hearns said that, you know, it was the thing <laughs> that got him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I should have started where I was going to start because I was in a great mood. <laughs> Introduce Browner. Let's move on. Uh, here he is, six foot seven inches tall, <laughs> twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, hot take machine, and known internationally to the ladies as the Brown Saw. He is an art connoisseur specializing in the work of Jean Michel Basquiat. Ladies and gentlemen, he's bringing the street cred from the podcast shed. What is up, Big Brown? Man, Scott, you are turning into the Iron Man of the offenders. Okay. <laughs> First, la yesterday, don't think I'm going to let this slide because you almost made the hit list today. Jeff Bezos saved you, okay? Because how dare you choose your new uh, 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 Mexican and black guy over your regular Mexican and black guy? You got some nerve to choose George Zidano and LZ over me and Alex. Ooh, -wee. listen. Zidano's Cuban. So what? So what? I don't mess it. Don't mess it up. I'm on the roll. I was kind of hot about that. So speaking of offending people, Wait, which part? And then, and then you show up today talking about Magic Johnson got the shot. So now you okay to get the shot? <laughs> but when uh, uh, Hank Aaron got the shot, you wasn't okay, huh? Wait a second. Wait a second. What did I pick? What did I pick? My other Hispanic friend and my other black friend. Uh, what? What did I pick them? Some, did someone tweeted at you. Yeah. Who would you pick in a game of two-on-two two between your radio partners? Right. So what did you, I say? You said that. You you made individual. You said Alex would be a beast in the paint. Mm -hmm. You said, uh, I don't remember everything else exactly. I said, said. I said that oh, LZ you, will bring the toughness because he kind of fashions himself as a tough street ball player. Bro, let, and let Sedano, Sedano modeled his whole game after Tim Hardaway. So he got a little crossover. I said, Browner is going to be the big man, going to bring the height. And Alex will be a beast in the paint. So I, I'm kind of handicapping how this is going to go down. No, you should have been like, no contest. These young fellas going to dog walk them boys. Okay. Let me tell you something. LZ, anytime, bro. Any, play this back for him when you get on there. When you, <laughs> when you see them, tell him, I said, whenever you ready, LZ. Whenever you ready, bro. Because I don't like nobody trying to throw no challenge down by no hoops. I'm here, LZ. Where you at, bro? Where you at? I'm easy to find. At Twitter. I don't know the Twitter handle, but Scott can tell you. <laughs> I'm easy to find. I don't even know my own Twitter handle. Right. I'm so Scott's here, on the hit list. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that sounded like a hit list to me. Because that just got me going. And then I, was, and I just got out of control. I got out of Are control. Are you sure, though? I, 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 because that no, sounded no, like a hit no, list to me, dude. No. <laughs> okay, well, you can put Scott Kaplan slash just Jeff Bezos. Okay. I'd like, I'd like to be in that company. I mean, I would, too. That would mean I would make more money. Jeff Bezos, mm. you clown, okay? Give these oh, people boy. unionize. Let them unionize, Jeff Bezos, bro. You worth so much money, you divorced your wife, and she became the third richest person on the planet. I don't even know how that happens, okay? That ain't <laughs> happened since Paul McCartney, okay? I don't know how anybody can have that much money that you divorce a person and she go up the ladder of rich people. It ain't going to hurt you, bro. You make billions upon billions of dollars a year, okay? You deliver packages like this, like like air, okay? You do, you deliver packages like nobody ever delivered packages before. You the Michael Jordan of package deliveries, bro. Let these people be Scottie Pippen. 
Let these people get health insurance. Let these people get a living wage. You can afford it. If you never made another penny your entire life, Jeff Bezos, guess what? You would be okay. You wouldn't miss a meal. And neither would nobody you know, they know, or they know, if that's how you choose to spend your money. I wish so I knew Jeff what you Bezos, were talking about. So Jeff Bezos is denying unionization for a um uh, a factory in Alabama that basically uh is the you know how Amazon has these hubs where they mm -hmm. ship all their packages from. Mm -hmm. One of the hubs in Alabama is trying to unionize. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Bezos, who's head of Amazon, is fighting that. So mm -hmm. today, Bernie Sanders is going down there to stand with these people on the picket line because they would like to unionize. Mm -hmm. And of all places, Alabama's minimum wage ain't even that high, bro. You got that in your couch. Jeff Bezos, do the right thing, bro. You and Scott both made the hit list. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe you can't believe you're going to even even think to back LZ and Sedano over us? What do you mean Ooh, think wait. about backing them? Ooh, I mean, wait. Browner, I, I saw you play basketball, uh, you know, two years ago, and you got worked. Did you ever see a person play basketball against a bear? Because that's what I did. So good luck putting anybody against Billy Ray as he tackle people as they shooting jump shots in the air because that's not how the game of basketball is played, sir. So I guarantee you, I guarantee you, LZ get anywhere near me on a basketball court. Domination. Domination. <laughs> and you can tell him I said it. Oh, man. You can tell him I said it. Oh, my God. You guys have got me in a great mood today. I was in a super good mood. Then Alex got all offended and butthurt. And then I got all I mean, more offended on, and man. more butthurt. And then, and then, and then Browner flipped it all on us. But you see, the thing is, is this early this morning, you guys know what I was up to this morning? And I bet you don't. Peloton? I have a guess. Yeah, I was Pelotoning. Yeah, Peloton. Wow. When'd you get a Peloton? You guys know about that? No. Nah. Mm. How did mm. you keep that a secret so long? No, congratulations. Me. Thanks, man. I haven't really talked that much at all. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, man. I took a uh took a took a really good class this morning with Cody Rigsby. He's like the really, really, really gay instructor who dance got some dance moves brother can move mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know about this alex no oh, i'm okay. just going along like mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. okay i was i thought you were affirming for me that you knew what i was talking about <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I okay i don't know if you guys heard i don't have a peloton oh really? i haven't oh, no. told you I, I haven't told you that oh. I, I have one so oh. i don't have one. Oh, yeah. didn't know that so yeah, anyway yeah. there was this one break in the action and i don't know why but i grabbed my phone and I saw Browner had a. Uh, so, hey, Alex. Oh, my bad. My bad. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> Today's show is great. This show's um, fired to all cylinders right now. Yeah. So I saw. Uh, so I saw Browner posted this video in his story, and I don't even know. It could have been on his Instagram story. I don't. Know, maybe it was Facebook. I really Instagram. don't remember. Instagram. It, it, yeah. I just want to. Make sure it's Instagram. So uh, I saw this video and I was freaking dying laughing. <laughs> well, when yeah. Alex and I connect before the show starts, he's hysterical crying laughing. He, and he and he's literally says to me, he goes, I'm crying. And I'm like, oh, no, is everything OK? What's wrong? You know, <laughs> like because he takes all these pictures and he posts all these pictures of his dog, you know, and I love this dog because I know Alex loves this dog. And I, I love the fact that we were there when he got the dog, you know, and he rescued it from Mexico. And now we see he got his best friend, you know? So he, he tells me this morning, before we all get started today, he tells me, hey, man, I was crying, man, crying hysterically. I'm like, oh, no, man, everything okay? Your mom all right? Your sister good? I mean, fiance, family, everybody good? He's like, no, no, no. I was hysterical crying because Browner sent a video and I was dying laughing <laughs> and i'm like dude i saw that video while on the peloton i didn't know if i'd anyway um so i know this video and it had it had grande crying browner why are you dude, be sending us these dying. videos tell us about it alex tell us what happened well i'll be totally honest with you guys i was on the toilet when i got this video <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of things happened i guess you know, i came up with the browner's hot take on the toilet <laughs> and other things and uh and and browner's like hey hit list uh jeff bezos picture and then he also sends if we have time this video 
and I click on it and I'm like, oh, great. Another fight video. But I, I saw it was only 10 seconds and I was like, okay. So I click on it and I legit, dude, have, in my life, I swear on my mother, I have never laughed that long and that much by myself. Like there was, I was by myself, dude. And I was like, little tears coming out of my, my face. Like wheezing, I was like, <laughs> like, dude, I was freaking uh. dying because <laughs> I, I think, and I've said this on the show, there is nothing more disrespectful in a fight than getting backhand slapped. <laughs> to me, that is the ultimate disrespectful move you can pull. I don't care about kicking someone in the crotch. I'm telling you, if you backhand slap someone in a fight, that is, I don't care about you. I don't respect you. I'm trying to make you look like a fool. And this video that I will play was that on steroids. Like it was, <laughs> this is like, this is like Mark McGuire juiced. Like this video is so good. Do you want me to just play Yeah. It so, or? okay. So here it goes. Everybody watching on YouTube, you're going to love it. <laughs> Everybody who's eventually going to be watching on TV. This is the wackiness of this, uh, this whole thing. And uh, everybody who's listening on an audio podcast platform or radio, I'll just do what I always do. Encourage you to come to our YouTube channel. So go ahead, Alex. Let's see what happens in 10 seconds. Okay. A couple guys get into a fight here in a restaurant. Boom! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and this flare. This oh, my flare God. <laughs> Funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, this guy uh, licked the back of his head before he did and just delivered <laughs> that guy died <laughs> so <laughs> oh man dude he put that dude on the cross he slapped him so hard oh my god oh okay wait wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> oh man oh. this is so funny this guy oh <laughs> boom oh. <laughs> Like full on contact. That is literally what Ric Flair used to do oh. when the guy was on the turnbuckle. He would <laughs> backhand slap their chest right. and go, woo. Like, ah. Oh. Okay, but wait. Oh. For those of you listening, here's what you missed. There's like these two guys, and there's this really big dude. And he's kind of getting into it with another guy. And he it seems like he's trying to push his his smaller friend out the door or something. And they they're in like a burger restaurant or a pizza restaurant. There's like a there's like booths and and like a checkery floor and video games like Miss Pac-Man in the background. And the the smaller guy comes over and tells the big guy, hey, back off. I got this. And literally licks his hand. And then freaking backhands the dude right in the chest, and the guy goes over this this uh, this booth. booth, and then he's out. Play one more time. This is great. I love I got it. tapped out right there. I got it. Right, I'm done. Okay. Oh! <laughs> oh. Woo! And then the Ric Flair at the end. Oh. He's just <laughs> so good. <laughs> Oh, this segment oh, of Captain Crew being brought to you by Corky's Pest Control. Wherever you are in Southern California, you make sure you got pest control problems. You call Cork. Call 1 800 901 1102. Corky's. Corky's. Woo! Oh, my God. That was so funny. What a great way to start the show. The, the, the wave of emotions that I've just oh, ridden from, from offending people to being offended to laughing my ass off. Oh my God. Oh, what a Welcome great show we got. Kaplan and up. crew. Yeah. What a great show we got coming up. Everybody stay right where you are. Big day around sports. NBA trade deadline from earlier in the day. We're going to get to a lot of stuff coming up. Stick around. All right, great friends. On a Thursday, it's Kaplan and crew on like every known platform now. I mean, like we're just, this has gotten out of control. In fact, I'm not even sure if it's good or bad. I'm really not. You know, in fact, the other day I, I asked everybody on Cited, hey, how do you listen or watch the show? And I got to say like overwhelmingly, it was people on YouTube, which I found interesting because I didn't know if it was going to be radio or um, that's why as we're getting ready today to announce a partnership with a television partner where we're actually going to broadcast the show from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. nightly. By the way, in Santa Barbara, 
in Palos Verdes, in Orange County, in San Diego. I mean, we're going to be on 950,000 cable TV homes. I don't know if 950,000 people are ever going to watch, but I, I asked the question, how do you take in the show? And I got to say, overwhelmingly, people at least on Sided were telling me that they are YouTubers. Hey, 25% of, um, of viewership on radio is still a lot of viewership, you know? So even if it's 25% of, of, I mean, like you said, it's only cited, but that's still a lot of people. You're saying 25% of viewership on radio is what? No, you on this, on the poll, I believe it's like 75% said YouTube uh -huh. and like 25% said radio. Oh, like that's a, that's a large chunk of, of our viewership. Yeah. Right. Right. Or listenership in this case. So yes, yeah. very good. Right on. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So listen, we're just getting going here on Thursday. Um, some stories that I know I want to get to as the show goes on later, because I want to talk about all the big moves today in the NBA. And, and how it came down to the wire as teams are waiting and deals are trying to be made and possibly like significant pieces of puzzles could be moved. So we'll, we'll get to some NBA trade deadline stuff a little bit later on in the day. Um, before we do, though, everybody's seeing the Browner hot take brackets because this thing, this is coming down to the wire here as we're headed towards the national championship of the NCAA tournament. We've got four finalists we're working our way to the championship game and then somebody's going to win the hundred dollar gift card to tori alice can you take us where we are right now statistically yes speaking? yeah thank i you. will update everybody uh right now so the top number one seed khalil mack is better than aaron donald is leading the number four seed oj simpson is innocent 60 to 40 percent oh come so, on juice so number one khalil mack is leading the way there. And mm -hmm. our other final four bracket, the number two seed, Carson Wentz is the top five quarterback in the NFL, is leading the number six seed. Minnesota is a better party school in San Diego State by 65 to 34%. Okay. All right. Now, remember, the rules of the game are these. You have to vote to find help us find a winner. You need to leave an argument to actually win the debate yourself. In the final analysis, though, whatever hot take wins, that's the one that Browner gives up on the show. And you know my feeling that the Khalil Mack is better than Aaron Donald is so ridiculous that that's the one I want him to have to give up. So please vote for the one that I'm supporting. OK, vote for my candidate. My I don't candidate. like I, I, I don't like how you're spoiling the pool, sir. You should not be in out here advocating. You should just say, hey, I voted for this. You guys can vote for whatever you want to vote for. Yeah, but in a political election where you really have a vested interest in one thing or the other, I really want you to lose your conviction for Khalil Mack is better than Aaron Donald. I want you to give that up. So I'm supporting that candidate. I hear you. I do. <laughs> but I'm saying that's a good take. That's a very good take. And that's statistically supported. You know what? Maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at this wrong, Alex. Maybe what we should be thinking about is maybe the take that I should want him to give up is the one he believes in the most. OJ. Yeah. That's a that's listen, that's a common known fact. That's not like right. it's not it's not a take, bro. That's real life. Okay, so good. So if if the OJ debate won the whole thing, you'd never be able to tell us on the show again that OJ was innocent, and then you would those, 30 years later, completely dropped this entire thing. Those two takes he firmly believes in. Firmly. The other two, he's wavered on Wentz because of what's happened so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just silly to not waver on that. For and now. then the Minnesota is better than party school was a funny thing for a, a few days there, but he doesn't truly believe it. He just said it while trying to get Dutcher to go to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So I think that the two top seeds are, are the two that are fighting it out right now between Donald and OJ Simpson. Either one is going to hurt him. Either one of those two. As long as one of those two wins, I'm happy. Yeah. But I mean, the OJ thing, I mean, for him to have to give up the OJ is innocent would be great. So one more time, here's what you do. Go to cited.co. Cited.co is the website. Or I prefer that you use the app. Download the Cited Debates mobile app and follow our account, Kaplan and Crew. And now please vote for 
OJ Simpson is innocent. That's I've changed my mind. <laughs> Don't do that, yeah, man. We got we still got five days left, so plenty can happen. Plenty okay. can happen. Okay, so there you go. Uh, cited debates app or cited.co, and uh, you can leave your opinions and you could be like Bernard Thompson. What's up, BT? Over here in the YouTube chat. You could be like Bernard Thompson, who won a $25 Amazon gift card last week. Or you could be like Bob Roush, who won a $25 Amazon gift card the week before. And if you're in the top 10, you still get an Amazon gift card. So there you go. All right. There you have it. I also put up the Burt Grossman's top pet peeves. It's not a bracket. I just put up the four that he gave us yesterday. Uh, let me see that. Burt Grossman yesterday, his top pet peeves here. Oh, look at this. Burke Roseman's top pet peeves, which is worse? Can you uh, read the uh, the options here, Alex? From what, according to to Burke Roseman, these are the four pet peeves he gave us: showering at the gym, or he put showering with guys, but I think he meant showering at the gym. No, he meant showering about. with guys because, like, as a guy in in the NFL, he would never shower with the team. So that's showering really in what a locker. Should I change it to showering in a locker room? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, okay. People who back into parking spaces, mm -hmm. lots of cologne guy, mm -hmm. and getting massages. Yeah, those are his top four port pet peeves. Yeah. Yeah, I, I voted for lots of cologne guy. Mm -hmm. Can't get away you know, from that. When you run into lots of cologne guy and you hug it out with him, like, I don't know if anybody's ever going to hug it out again, but oh. back in the old days, lots of cologne guy, you hug it out with him. Next thing you know, the whole day. You smell like cologne guy. Mm -hmm. And it's never good cologne. What bothers me more is perfume lady, though. But I guess they're basically the same thing because women's perfume tends to last on you longer. Men's perfume smells worse. But a woman's perfume, like, chokes you. Like, oh, ah, oh. And it's always, like, old ladies. Okay. Well, maybe you should put that on your pet peeve list. Old lady perfume. I don't really have a pet peeve list, but there is a woman who we all know, whose name I never always forget, who is old, ultra heavy perfume lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's hard when you don't say her name because I don't know who it is. I don't know it either. <laughs> yeah. I don't know it either. I know. We all know I, her, I but we don't like know her name. Old the too much cologne guy is similar to what's worse, loud motorcycle or cigar guy. It's cologne guy. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a drive by, you know, you're not, you can purposely leave the guy. But if he comes at you and he's stinking it up with, with You're like curved cologne from Walgreens, and mm -hmm. it's, it's whoa, you can do. whoa, 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 why are you attacking curve like that, bro? What I mean, you it's doing? Not a, it's not a great smelling cologne. Yes, it is. Why, if it if your cologne, whoa. and this is a fact, this is not a hot take. Whoa, if your cologne is sold at Walgreens. It's popular. It don't smell good. It don't smell good. Okay, ho, 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 duh. My 20s was spent wearing curve, bro. It worked. Okay? Not a lot. Just a little and then one down low. It works, bro. It's not Axe body spray, dude. Well, yeah, that's what I was mean, going to ask you. Too. Is that what this is? No, I'm not saying you go you don't you don't like super do it. You two sprays, bro. Listen to me. Listen to me. If I could afford it in high school, it's not a good cologne. You and that is what I had in high school. What's wrong with see you? You had it, so you know what's wrong with a company making an affordable product that everybody can enjoy. That's the whole purpose of making something wide ranging. You ain't mad at I mean, listen, you ain't mad at hot got, dogs. If you got if you got if you got Curve Cologne, Jumpman Twenty Three, and Adidas scent, and and Old Spice, that's not a not a hit list of great colognes right there. Jumpman Twenty Three was terrible. Don't don't put Curve in the same category as Jumpman 23. Jumpman 23 was terrible. It was the worst cologne I've ever smelled. It's right next to like Old Spice Cool Water. Wait, Alex, did great. you have did you have Jumpman 23? No, because I knew it smelled bad. It was at least terrible. Curve. Listen, I'm telling you, Curve. If we're talking about Curve, I will give it this. It is it's like if we're talking about fast food, you know, it's at the top of fast food, but it's still fast food. You're not going to like a fancy restaurant with Curve. Well, I it's think Browner, like you, you, you should be offended. I mean, here Alex is now <laughs> insulting your cologne. That I you think Browner still uses Curve. That's well, why that's it's right. mad right now. Of course. Listen, I'm not only I'm only reason I'm not wearing it now. Oh, I haven't worn it recently because I ran out of it and I don't have time <laughs> to go and get it because I keep it in my car. Yeah. You know, Pow, pow, ready to roll, bro. I cannot believe you're going to sit up here and down curve like that because it's Terrible. available at Walgreens. The, the coronavirus shot available at Walgreens, you ain't down in that. 
What you talking about? You, you something That's else. That's a pharmacy. Man. You something Farm- else. It's, it's, it's personal care. Hygiene, bro. You got to smell good. They got deodorant in there. You ain't dissing them for selling deodorant. Oh, wait. Mm-mm. Breath mints. You against breath mints too? Because they are Walgreens. <laughs> 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 so mad i triggered i know, triggered. I know you did yeah, triggered. because you know, i used steady. to listen bro there was nothing better for the night for me but i knew i was about to turn up i threw that curve on bro it's going down right now okay there's a couple <laughs> ladies out here right now around san diego county that when they smell curve they think of me okay they think of me. <laughs> all right so don't you ever, ever <laughs> talk about curve like that ever again. I will not stand for the slander, sir. I will not. You know, uh, know, you know. Let me tell you something. Coming up in a few minutes, we uh, <laughs> we're going to introduce our new partners for our new television venture. And um, when they get this show, they're going to be like, "What? What are we doing?" <laughs> what do we get? <laughs> what do we wait? I thought they told us this was like a sports show or something, uh, and then they're like, Yeah, yeah I mean, it sort of kind of is. It is like sometimes it's sports, and sometimes it's just a bunch of dudes, you know. During, during football season, it's a sports show. <laughs> let me let's let's interview him with <laughs> let's interview him with hot takes. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's interview him. Our question should be like, do celebrity endorsements work on you? Uh, what do you think about getting backhand slapped during a fight? Here's the uh, video. Yeah, here's the video. <laughs> and let's ask him, uh, uh, is OJ Simpson innocent? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about who's better, Khalil Mack or Aaron Donald? <laughs> right. Is right. Herb a good cologne? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's another good that's another good one for today. That's another really good one. Browner is is all on the curve. Do, do you qualify curve as a good cologne? Yes or no? Simple. Who would really go, man? Y'all crazy. What you see what people bro. think, Brown. Or then people got opinions, dog. You know, All right. don't get crazy. Yeah, listen, when you when you like listen when you talked about like McDonald's and I told you McDonald's breakfast is overrated. That's a taste thing. I understand that, but when it comes to smells, you can't put curve on the level of like a Dolce and Gabbana. You just can't do it, dude. Bro, I ain't even never smelt that. I don't even know what that smell like. That's too Sm- what you smell want? me. What you want hundred dollar cologne for, man? It smell water. Smell good. Hundred dollar bills, y'all. Come on, bro. If you were from where I was from, then you would know. Who me or him? Yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, uh, he listen. He also downed cool water. I'm not going to defend cool water. I'm not. <laughs> that's my uncle's cologne. So he old school. So I'm gonna respect that. I'm gonna let you have that. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stand here for no no curve slander, bro. I I'm can't just do telling it. you right here, and I'll drop it after this. This is the way. Wait. I oh, and here, here's, here's another important question about curve. Which one? The blue can, the green one, or, or the green one? What you talking about? I'm talking about the gold can. The gold one is the one you go with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Green. I was like, oh, that's why I haven't bought it down. in like 20 years, dude. Sorry. Yeah, dude. I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. I mean, yeah. if you're talking about some Aqua Velva or some Paco Rabanne, you know. Ralph Lauren in the green bottle with the gold horse, you know, maybe I know what you're talking about, but anyway, Hey, listen, uh, this segment of the show is being brought to us by the total T clinic. Since we're talking about dudes smelling good. Okay. Guys start with your health before you even worry about your smell. All right. Look, you get a little older, your testosterone levels drop just a little bit. And then you start thinking to yourself, what's going on with me, man. I don't feel the same. I'm not, what, am I getting old here? You know, I don't feel like working out. I don't feel like going for a run. And by the way, my lady, she's in her prime and I'm just not feeling it right now. Look, guys, you got to get balanced, okay? And and for a good, healthy living, testosterone uh, being balanced in your body is a great thing. When your testosterone is low, you're dragging ass. When your testosterone is right, you feel like a million bucks. It's really that simple. So you decide. You want to drag ass? You want to feel like a million dollars? Your choice. Come to the Total T Clinic, get your testosterone levels checked, 15 minutes, you're in, you're out. And in six weeks, probably before that, six weeks of treatments, you're going to be like, oh my God, this is what's been wrong with me. Testosterone's been low the whole time. So get your life back, dudes. Okay. Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. So um, hyper local here for a moment, getting ready for opening day, Petco Park. Thursday, one week from today, April Fool's Day. And I got to send a shout out to my guys, the Foos Fighters, my favorite tribute band in San Diego, Brent and Nick. 
guys are going to be playing the wonder bus cruising around the gas lamp on opening day. Alex said yesterday, let's go do a show from there. They want us to do it. They do. We, we should do it. You guys want to do it? I thought well, maybe we, you said we were yesterday. What happened? Did we change our minds? Cause we'll no, it's not that we didn't, we didn't change our minds. I just, I didn't do anything about it. You know? Oh, you know, it was an idea thing. We'll wait to the 31st or the 30th. And then you'll be like, Hey, <laughs> Hey, we're yeah. doing a show. Hey, Browner, hey, we're doing hey, a Brown. show on the, right. on the moving yeah. bus right, right. on this morning, Thursday. Yeah, right, yeah. The morning of Thursday morning. Hey, Browner, right. what are you doing right now? Because like in an hour, I'd love to be able to do the show from the moving bus. You got this? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Why not? We you don't this. think that our, our new television partner would love what that would look like for them next week? Dude, it would look that dope. That would be our fourth show uh, for them. Yeah. It would be dope. You guys want to try it for reals? Yeah. Yeah, sounds like gonna need a test run though. Gonna gotta get on that bus first. Yeah, maybe this weekend. Yeah, Yeah. maybe this weekend we get the Foos Fighters on the bus. Although, wait, real quick. Speaking of this weekend, I know it's today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Beer Friday. Is everybody down? Because later today on the show, Jason Lawhead is going to be here, and Jason is headlining this weekend. And I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. But he's headlining at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. Now, for those of you guys that have been longtime listeners, you know I love the Comedy Store. We've done many charity events there. We've put on a lot of big shows at the Comedy Store. So our man Jay Law is headlining at the Comedy Store. Who wants to go on Friday night? I'm going. I'm going to the late show Friday night. Okay. Anybody else here want to go? I thought, yeah, I said I was going. I thought I was going yesterday. Okay. So you're committed. You're in. To the late show, yeah. I'm not going. I can't go early. I can go. No, late. me neither. I can't do the early show. <laughs> Grande, how about you, man? No, I don't hang out with unvaccinated people. Sorry. And you Why? I would, I would think vaccinated people would hang out with anybody because they should feel like super protected. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Wow. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Interesting. Mm-mm. But you're going to this the Padres thing, game, though, right? Friday? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Hmm. yes. You taking with vaccinated people? You take you taking vaccination cards? Dude, there's ten thousand people in there. You know how big that stadium is? Oh, 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 you know how oh. Big that stadium is. This is outside. The comedy yeah. stores outside, bro. Right, right, and it's a limited oh, it is? crowd. Yeah, limited crowd. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Oh, you're in. I thought it was indoors. Can no. you commit? Can you commit to your lady? No, I cannot. Whoa, that's the other. Let me text her right now. Oh my! You can't be like, hey, I'm going out Friday night. I'll see you when I get home. You can't. Do no, that. no, I wanted him to bring his lady. You bringing your lady? Yeah, that's why. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. it's not a work thing. Oh, was was Bert and Linda unavailable? Clearly, I haven't invited them. Mm. Yeah, right. I only invite my closest friends. Uh huh. Let's see how this is going. Mm-hmm. We're probably going to have to bring equipment to the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like in Coming yeah. to America yeah. one when when uh, when the the guys get invited over to the house. They're like, "Hey, we're having a party over at the house. You guys should yeah, come." Like, Put this on, <laughs> right? They're like, "Oh my god, we made it! We're invited to the party." They get there, like, "Here, here's the red jackets. You guys are parking cars and then making drinks." You know, no, it's not like that. that dogs. Moves. It worked it out though. That's how he won Lisa McDowell over on them swings, player. Yeah. It's not like that, dogs. Okay. Hey, um, coming up, we're gonna talk to our new partner that is going to start airing the show on television. And I gotta say, what I think is most interesting um and potentially exciting about this opportunity is we're gonna have um cable TV in San Diego, Orange County in palos verdes and in santa barbara so i realize we're not getting like all of la and um you know people use different oh, services oxnard. we have yeah we're not hey 805 ventura county oxnard you know we're getting close we're, we're in santa barbara dog you know my mom asked me what'd she say she's like so you're gonna be on in oxnard can i watch you and i said no and she got really sad so maybe right. I should ask this gentleman that's coming on with us. How do we get in Oxnard? It's a good question. Okay. How do we expand? How do we get to Vegas? Ooh, in person. <laughs> you just want to get out, <laughs> Mr. Vaccination. God, I need my second dose already. Let's go. Yeah. LFG. Okay. Coming up, we are all together going to meet our new television partners. We literally have not met this gentleman. Okay. We kind of got a bio on who this gentleman is. And now we're about to meet him for the first time. This is the guy running this whole TV operation. And uh, we're going to start airing on cable TV nightly from 7 to 8 p.m. coming up this Monday. Let's all meet this gentleman together. Stick around.
Hey, great friends. On a Thursday, we've been teasing this for a while, kind of the worst kept secret in town. That's because you can't tell me anything. You know, once you tell me something, forget it. Like, I can't keep a secret, you know? So uh, we have been teasing that we are about to announce a new television partnership, which is kind of interesting when you think about it, because two years ago, just as 1090 was getting ready to go off the air. And Alex, aren't we kind of like right there? We're, we're like two April years 1st. out exactly. Yeah. April 1st, two years ago. Think about that. And the world has changed so much, but in particular in our business, you know, you've got to redefine, recreate. So two years ago, 1090 is going off the air. We're only on 1090. That was the only way you could get what we did. And we were, I will admit, arrogant enough to think that the whole world just going to get in their car and turn on the radio. You know, it was the only place we were on was 1090 radio. We went off the air. When we went off the air, we stayed on stream. And that sort of opened my eyes to, okay, there, everybody can do this. Everybody can, can get the audio from their phone, from an app. Okay. Then we got lucky. Of course, everybody knows the story. Callaway golf had us in their, their studios. And for six months we slept up there, you know, I mean, literally we carpooled like eight people in a car. And then we built a studio in my house and then, you know, new year came and pandemic happened and who knew what was going to happen? Literally did not know. But in the last seven or so months from YouTube and audio podcast platforms, we added terrestrial radio. And right now time for us to add cable TV. Let me welcome the senior vice president and region manager from Cox, California, Sam Atisha is here. And Sam, we are happy to have you. And uh, we are really, really excited to be going on to televisions all throughout Southern California through this relationship with Cox. Thank you for being here, Sam. Absolutely. And uh, Scott, congratulations to you and your team for pivoting over the last two years, continuing to find uh, business models at work. And we are incredibly proud and excited to partner with you and the Mighty Year 1090 to get you guys on our U or View platform, Channel 4, uh, throughout our service area and uh, Charter Homes in San Diego. So very excited. So what's really interesting about this is when, when people listening on radio hear Channel 4 San Diego and Cox, the old timers will remember Sam, you know, back in the day, Channel 4 San Diego aired Padres games. Do you know that in 2003, Channel 4 San Diego, I was working for them at the time, they did um, the media day at the Super Bowl for the Raiders and the Buccaneers. And the NFL Network didn't exist at that time. And ultimately, what media day has become at the Super Bowl was all based on what Channel 4 had come up with, with Cox had come up with in San Diego. So, it's interesting. People hear Channel 4 San Diego. They know Sam the Cooking Guy, the Padres. And now we're going to join and, and be on in Channel 4 San Diego. A lot of homes still have Channel 4, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting you bring that up. And, you know, what a history like the first, right? I mean, if you remember where Channel 4 started, exactly how you laid it out, you know, post-Republican convention in San Diego, there's some great minds that let's create a local channel and uh, at the time, uh, for us Padre fans, you either couldn't really watch the Padres because they weren't on TV or they were on two or three or more stations, kind of a disjointed media strategy. And for 15 years, the Padres were on Channel 4. And then we built some incredible uh, local programming, you know, uh, leisure, arts, entertainment, cooking, you know, food, you know, one-on-ones uh, with Jane Mitchell, Sam the Cooking right. Guy, all the things you mentioned. And uh uh, and it's been amazing to see how that model has continued now uh, in, in a lot of other um, channels and programs around the country. But uh, I remember when you were on there back in the day, you know, I grew up in San Diego. It was always great to watch you. And we were just, you know, chatting. You just never know what you were, where you were going to go or what you were going to say. So and I'm sure the show is the same. And that's what really makes it so exciting to welcome you, you guys back in your team. And I'm really looking forward to uh, to watching you guys. Well, we appreciate it. Sam Atisha is the senior vice president for Cox, California. Now, Sam, just explain to everybody who's listening and watching that when we air the show on television, it'll be from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. at night, but we'll be on in San Diego and in Santa Barbara on Channel 4, right? But in Palos Verdes and in Orange County, we'll be on Channel 118. Do I have all this right? Yeah, you do. You do. So our uh, what was Channel 4 became our Your View platform, and uh, we run it through all of our homes in California. 
uh, on our uh, expanded basic. And uh, we're really excited. We have some wonderful programming around it. And, you know, it's an outgrowth of what Channel 4 was, which was hyper local. And when this opportunity came up to partner with you, uh, we said, we got to do this, uh, you know, great show, wonderful format, excellent team that you have. And so we're excited to see where our partnership goes. Yeah, hey, we Sam. Are too. hey, Sam, when you, you grew up here in San Diego and yeah, you El probably Cajon. You grew up with Channel 4. Yeah. And so now being able to be a part of Cox and being able to contribute to what goes out on Channel 4, how, what's that like for you as a, as a person working in the industry? It's, uh, it's amazing. You know, um, Bill Geppert, Dan Novak, and a whole bunch of other folks that yeah. started Channel 4. We could go through the list of, of some Channel 4 alumni. I mean, if, if you're a baseball fan like I am, you're going to – I'd love to go hear them and watch them. You're going to hear Matt Vaskurgeon up uh, – you know, calling Angels games an original Channel Four, you know, broadcast uh, yeah. team. You got Mud still in the booth, right? You got a whole bunch of folks all over the place, uh, you know, from Channel Four. So it's really, uh, it's an honor, really, to do some of these partnerships with Scott and team and and everybody and and the crew, Kaplan and crew. You know, that's what it's all about for us is having that opportunity to to highlight and showcase local talent and it's something we will continue to do here at cox so uh great question and i'm excited uh, as your view continues to grow at the opportunities to continue to partnership locally yeah sam atisha is here and uh sam is representing cox because he is the senior vice president and their regional manager and we're announcing today that starting this upcoming monday night from 7 p.m to 8 p.m san diego and santa barbara it's channel four and in Orange County and in Palos Verdes, it's channel 118. We're going to take the show, the radio show, the podcast, and now we're going to actually air it in prime time on television. Almost a million homes throughout Southern California. Really exciting. Hey, Sam, it's been a weird year. We've had to pivot as we talked about a little bit earlier. But in your business, I'm curious. So the whole world had to learn to work from home. Everybody's on Zoom. You know, nobody knew what Zoom was a year ago, right? Um, and we're all, we all need as much internet and Wi-Fi as we can get. And even now in our business, it's different. It's not the way it was where we show up at a radio studio. Everything's Wi-Fi. Without right. Wi-Fi, we're, we're, we're in bad shape. What has it been like in your industry over the past year? Yeah, you know, it's a great question, and I get it a lot. I mean, do you work from home or do you live at work? And it, it's been tough on all of us. And so, you know, we uh, we pivoted like everyone. You know, we're over a year into this. Uh, back in early March, for our employees that could work from home, we got them safely working from home. But, you know, we we manage a twenty plus thousand mile network. We have retail stores. We have technical facilities. We have people that support our more than one million customers uh, in their homes and businesses. And those folks can't work from home. And so, big shout out to all of our employees that, you know, continue to operate uh, out there uh, supporting us. And it's. You know, I'll give you a, a stat that's just unbelievable. We experienced two years of internet traffic growth on our network in the first six weeks of the pandemic. Wow. And, and that has continued to stay. And, and, you know, we can, you know, people are doing what we're doing, right? They're connecting over all these uh, platforms. They're sending video and other files. So we've had to pivot. And um, at first we focused on our employees, making sure they're safe and getting them what they needed to continue their jobs. And then we focused on our customers and, you know, providing lots of support for our customers uh, to get through this really difficult time. And then really doubling down on our communities. We are really active in all the communities that we operate in. And uh, we have been stepping up our support of, I would just say, really strong basic services from, you know, food bank and food insecurity and supporting nonprofits that focus on, you know, internet adoption and making sure that everybody has internet and a device. And so um, well, big shout out to our employees. Let, yeah. Let me jump in on that real quick. Yeah. Browner, you're going to, you're going to love this. You ready for this? So, you know, I've been on the board for computers to kids, San Diego for many, many years. And Cox has been a phenomenal partner. And what C2 does is it collects computers that companies, you know, are replacing and then strips them clean FBI style and then is able to take those computers and get them into the hands of families who are in underserved communities and these kids who, you know, need these computers for educational tools and they need Wi-Fi 
for educational tools. They may not have the availability. So the partnership between Computers to Kids San Diego and Cox has been amazing for so many families in San Diego in particular. Yeah, I mean, Scott, first of all, thank you for being on that board. It is, oh, my pleasure. Cherie uh, just does an amazing job there. And obviously Tammy and Larry and their vision early on, but you nail that, you know, um, we want to make, we wanted to make sure every kid could have finished the school year last year strong. And so we focused on, you know, two months of free internet and uh, we have a 995 internet offer for kids. We bumped the internet speeds and we've continued that out through this year and just partnering with that team. I, you know, I heard a number, I think last year they gave out more than 30,000 devices, you know, to folks that need them. And, and, you know, it's very nominal. They do everything you mentioned and they charge, you know, about a hundred bucks or less for a device and provide, mm -hmm. you know, all the software and uh, that device needs to connect to something. So our 995 connect to compete offer has been something we have been pushing out there hard because we want to make sure every kid is connected to the internet so they can do school and all the other things they, they need to do in their homes during this time. And it's been a, it's been a wonderful partnership. I think uh, from a person who grew up in an underserved area, I I can't say this enough, and I and I'm 100 sincere about this. For a company to actually talk the talk and then walk the walk, I don't think you guys know what that means to kids to be able to, in a partnership with C2, to be able to give them the opportunity to just have a chance. And I think when you guys are doing that, you don't understand what that means to kids and what that means to these families and what that means to these communities. Cause all these kids want is a chance. And for you guys to play a part in that, you don't get enough credit for that. Cause I mean, that's a, that's a latte. <laughs> yeah. I, um, you know what? I really appreciate that. I mean, you know, I think in the last like three to four years, we've probably donated about 500,000 in cash to computers, to kids. We just fully believe in what they do. But uh, for us, it starts with our family ownership. You know, Cox Communications is a privately held company. We're owned by the Cox family. We have a fourth generation family member uh, at Cox Enterprises. And the family has always been focused really, I would say on three areas. And that is taking care of our employees who take care of our customers and giving back in our communities. And, you know, I am incredibly blessed to be here. And they, uh, you know, the family sets the tone by their giving and we have the opportunity to really support our community. So I. I appreciate the shout out, but uh, it's uh, and our employees are passionate about organizations that make the community a better place to live and work and to take care of, like you said, you know, the underprivileged and the folks that just they need a little bit of help because they're going to seize that opportunity and, and propel themselves and their families forward. So I'm going to bring this full circle, Sam. Am I to am I reading this correctly that the chairman of Cox also did the race across America like our co-host Scott Kaplan did? You, you know what? Jim Kennedy, uh, who is our chairman, he was our CEO of Cox Enterprises for many years. He is incredibly competitive and a competitive cyclist. Yes, I believe Jim Kennedy uh, was on a four man team that back in the day, I'm probably going to screw it up, but sometime in the early 90s, I That's think, right. uh, did the race across America and, and had the world's record for that back in the 90s, yeah. like 92, I think. Oh, so, dude. I, I I wanted to just uh, to keep going, and I may be getting ahead of myself here, guys, with with Scott and John. But as the world kind of is slowly coming back to normal, we here at Kaplan and Crew have a Kaplan and Crew decathlon planned, <laughs> where it's Scott versus John, and we have come up with like ridiculous events and some actual athletic events. I think Cox coming out and filming this with us is is a great way to to showcase what we are, which is ridiculous. <laughs> we should take a look. Yeah, well, I agree with that. And we should take a look at that. Um, and, you know, Mr. Kennedy is going to be out here. Hopefully, if we can do this in person, he is uh, he has been selected as one of the USS Midway um, gala recipients for this year. And uh, I think he's planning on coming out in September. So maybe maybe we can get Scott to talk about uh, a little racing, because I know, Scott, you were you've done that uh, uh, challenge athletes ride. And you've also yeah. done the 12 man ride, I believe, right across America. We, we did the eight man ride. Eight man ride. OK. Yeah. And it was an amazing experience. And I'll tell you, I, I would do it again. Um, I really had a great time. And when people say to me, they go, so dude, you rode a bike across the country. How, how long did that take? And I said, it took six days. They're like, no, no, come on. And I'm like, yeah, I was part of an eight man team and we're on the road 24 hours a day for six plus days until we got to Annapolis, Maryland. And it was, it was one of the greatest team experiences of my life. I loved so, it. I so you did eight it. 
imagine i think jim was a four yeah so it's a totally I mean, different deal that's a totally yeah, yeah that's yeah. insane it's twice as much work yeah yeah so, bas- so basically what you guys are saying is that you guys don't have pelotons <laughs> I, i'm not a bike rider i'm, I'm not uh, you're not gonna see me on <laughs> online on a peloton no good for you good for you you're one of the rare ones i like yeah, you yeah yeah i hey, enjoy if, the outdoors hey, too much if you were a peloton rider you would have told us already yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had a few of those on already, huh? Is that what well, they do? You know, Scott over here every day. Oh. You know what I was doing this morning? Yeah. I was, right. on my peloton. I was on my I was on my Peloton. You know, I'd like to give a report on which instructor I'm taking that day. All right. So Sam, last yeah. thing here, you know, we we are dependent on you guys. We are dependent on Cox and high speed internet and Wi Fi. We're trying to figure something out. Alex has had a Cox guy at his house trying to do all this work. And he actually told us something we don't quite get, that his, his cable is on Wi-Fi. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but where's like the thing? Where's, I mean, Alex, maybe you should describe this better I, than I, me. It's the way the tech guy described it to me was that my cable runs off the Wi-Fi, which is fine. But when I'm watching a sporting event, if my neighbor's not on Cox, they're cheering like five seconds before me, which is very <laughs> annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so hey alex do you have a uh do you have a wireless set top box is that what you have I, I believe so 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 and again um you know a lot of different uh complexities in the home but so one of our products that we have is a wireless set top box because a lot of people like to take their tvs outdoors but they might not have the wiring right so you know that video signal comes into that box and then it gets pushed out to your to your TV. So yeah. that might be that small little delay. Um, but that's a cool product, you know, for people that have want to push their TVs outdoors and uh, kind of, you know, push the, the video experience outside the wireless set top box is a great experience. We are relying on, on you guys though. And it's a good point. We're working from home, Sam, I'm going to yeah. send you my address. You just make yeah. sure that that four, one, three, five, that. Yeah. that this place you know, right here stays good. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I will tell you one of the things I, you know, I watch the news a lot. I'm sure you all do too. And you, and you've seen how the news folks have really pivoted, right? Everyone's working from home and mm-hmm. delivering the news from home. Mm-hmm. I scan the channels every day and I just get kind of a good feeling when I see everybody, you know, looking good from home and kind of delivering <laughs> a great, you know, uh, stand up from home. I said, okay, that's probably our network. And it's, it looks pretty good. It looks actually a lot better than pretty good. It looks amazing. And, yeah. and look folks, you know, we, we, uh, you know, a lot goes on to take care of all of our customers. A lot goes on to keep the network up, but I, I can assure you that, you know, we are doing the best we can to not only deliver, on our promise today, but make the investment to keep this network going into the future. We know people rely on us. We know how important it is to give people the ability to connect to the things that they really care about most, whether it's doing the show or talking to a loved one across the country or going to school or working. And so we're doing everything we can. And I can assure you, our employees are passionate about making sure that everybody has a Cox experience. So uh, in in a crazy year, you guys became the everything you became the school you became the office you became the entertainment center you became the movie theater you became all these things at once so whoever hating tell them go pound sam man (laughs) (laughs) i haven't heard that expression you said are you working from home or living at work i haven't heard that one somehow yeah yeah. that's a good one feels like sometimes yeah hey sam real quick before you go um you got padres dodgers you got Uh uh oh I mean, well, wait Come a second, because wow. you, you're the senior vice president, and the regional manager for California. You got these channels that we're going to be on in Palos Verdes in Orange County. You got San Diego. You got Santa Barbara. Padres Dodgers this year. Who's going to win? It's not even a question. Uh, people know where I stand in the company and people know where I stand out there. I am a diehard Padres fan. You know, guys, I'm an immigrant. My parents came here uh, when I was very young. And baseball was one of my first sports that I played. And uh, the Padres, you know, I remember going to games at Qualcomm. Um, You know, I remember watching the unbelievable, one-of-a-kind, I I don't think ever to be repeated, Tony Gwynn, you know, and then moving into Petco and everything that the team has done. I've I've stuck with it through the good and the bad, and I'm sticking with it today. And I have so much, just like I do with people getting vaccines and – the world out there changing for us personally. I got a lot of hope and optimism for the Padres this year and I'm all Padres and uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully getting into the stadium this year and watching a game or two. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Alex is, is talking about like paying outrageous prices to go on Friday night. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not paying opening day prices. The Monopoly little, man, the Monopoly it's a man over here. For me. It's a little too high for me, but Friday night is, I think it's reasonable. There's only 10,000 people allowed in there. I think it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's like demand ticketing, right? You know, the more demand, the ticketing pricing goes up. And so mm-hmm. you got to pick your game. And so we might be watching the Padres playing that uh, number 32 ranked team out there. Right. Just so we can afford the tickets, but um, I'm excited. I just uh, last year was unbelievable to watch him. And I just wish I could have gotten into a game, you know, but I'm really looking forward to this year. All right. Sam Atisha, the senior vice president, the region manager for Cox, California, announcing Kaplan and crew this Monday, 7 to 8 p.m., San Diego, Santa Barbara, Channel 4, Palos Verdes, Orange County, Channel 118, our new partnership with Cox. Sam, what a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott and crew, and looking forward to growing our partnership with the Mightier 1090 and Kaplan and crew. See you all later. Bye-bye. All right, Sam. Thank you, buddy. Take care. All right, great friends. For those of you that are just getting with us, we just made our announcement of our new TV show. So before we move on in today's radio show slash podcast slash video streaming deal that we do, let me just get some instant feedback here. Grande, Browner, what do you guys think about the announcement that we just made? What do you think about this partnership? Yeah, go ahead. My first question is, how does John Browner feel? about being in the slot that Sam, the cooking guy, used to be on. Oh, shiznit. Let me tell you all about something. It only, it only gets better. It only got better. They got, they got rid of that clown because it was time for the real people to didn't do the job. They wanted some actual ratings in that time. So they came to the people who could get the job done. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. Mm-hmm. Is that really the bottom line? I mean, I could keep giving you more lines, but that's the bottom one right now because we got other things. You know, this, this is awesome for us. It's great for it, it's great for us raising our profile. We get to be funny on television. We get to basically take what we do on TV. Like you can't beat that. You can't know, beat man. that. We we're not know, making Alex, no two plays. Alex, let me ask you your opinion on this. You ready? So when we first left radio mm-hmm. and we were streaming, you were kind of one of the first people that that said we don't need the radio anymore. Right? You remember that? Right. Okay. Then we went from all the podcasting stuff we were doing Mm -hmm. and then we got back onto the radio in August of last year. Yeah. And, and I actually think the radio has been good for us in that, you know, there's certain sponsors like total T they want radio. Tori holistics is like, we want to be on radio also. So that's good. Um, But, but the addition of television, you were the guy that was like, we don't need radio back then. So now we've gone from traditional media to new media to adding traditional media. So what do you think about now you're on radio and now we got TV and I actually like the fact that it's, we're not on simulcasting. I like the fact that we're pre-packaging and putting on at seven o'clock at night. What do you think? Yeah, we were supposed to do this. Do you remember we were supposed to do this back in the day with Fox sports, San Diego, but we were an ESPN affiliate and that was the only holdup that Fox anyways. So the way I look at it now is the way I look at it in our, um, the way we say it in our sales package, we are where you are. And if you're in the car, we're there. If you're at home, we're there. If you're on your phone, you're there. If you're on YouTube, we're there. If you're on Facebook, we're there. For Literally, if you type in Kaplan and Crew or search Kaplan and Crew, we are there, which is the most important thing to me. So do I think a podcast needs radio and television? No. But is it helpful? Yes. Does it saturate because you're everywhere? Oversaturate? or yeah. is this, No. Yeah. Because I don't think if you watch the TV show, you watch the YouTube show. And I don't think if you watch the YouTube show, you listen on podcasts. And I don't think if you listen on podcasts, you listen on radio. I think we're talking to a completely different demographic every platform you're at. All right. All right. Very good. Hey, listen, congratulations, Bill Hagen. Um, I don't know how you pull this crap off, man. I really don't. You are, are you guys, some kind of wheeler and dealer. I'll tell you that right now. My last question for both of you. Are you guys going to start like dressing different because you're on TV now? You can be, Cap going to show up in a button down every from the top up at least? No, no, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it really real. Okay. The only issue I have is I installed these, these blackout curtains in my office. I got to figure out lighting now. Cause, cause when the TVs change behind me, sometimes I look really healthy. And then other times I look really green. Just depends on which channels are, are on which ad behind me. And it's just, it's a bad look. I can tell you that right now. Okay. Listen, um, this segment of Kaplan and crew is being brought to you by 
Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. You got any problems? I've been seeing Cork on TV an awful lot lately talking about spot treatment for termites. If you've got termite problems, but it's not the whole house and you don't have to have, have it tented and you don't have to move out, Cork can come in and just find it, get that spot treatment, blast it. Nobody has to go anywhere and it's super inexpensive and there's a great four-year guarantee. Corky's Pest Control, call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Thank you. All right, there's a guy who's coming on the show right now who everybody loves. Everybody loves this guy. This Friday night and this whole weekend, he will be headlining at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. I will be there Friday night for the Late Show. Doesn't that feel good to say? Yeah. He's headlining this weekend at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. Right. That's the right. The world, nature is healing. I will hmm. be there Friday night for the Late Show. Browner has committed to coming. Alex is committed to coming, but he's not sure about his lady. My lady's coming, and I'll usually show up with a couple of ladies. How about that? How about that? Yeah, I like yeah. that. Here ladies he is. Man. Yeah, the ladies' man. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go to a comedy show. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy right here. He's got on that beautiful Callaway golf hat. He's rocking that Reggie Jackson tee. Look at that. And he's in Love his me car. some Reggie. And he's in his car. Why is he in his car? He doesn't seem to be moving. Here is longtime great friend, comedian, and chef, Jason Lawhead. Hi, hey guys. Hey, buddy. I wish, I, you know what? I wish I had termites. Then at least I'd know somebody I could call. <laughs> and that's why I'm sitting in my car because talk about saturation. My whole house is saturated right now because I'm having a. Uh, I don't know if I can say this word, but slab leak. I don't know if that even. <laughs> I'm having a slab leak. In why the would house, you not so... be able to say that word? I don't know. You we know were talking why. about it. All... We were talking about it off air, and slab leak just sounds dirty. It sounds like a, a side effect to some adult medicine. But <laughs> a, um... slab leak, a slab leak sounds like what they check during your colonoscopy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, colonoscopy. Like, you, yeah. You may, you, may, you, you may experience slab leak. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it's just good to be back. And uh, congratulations, guys. I, you know, I just I, I said this at the beginning of when 1090 first went off the air and you guys kept doing what you were doing from the Callaway offices on. And, you know, I always said, man, I'm, I'm here to be a guy and whatever. And I, I just had a good feeling about your persistence. And, uh, you know, you guys as a group and, and you knew what it took and you just kind of even through the, the shutdown of the radio station and then into COVID, man, um, you guys been you guys have been like an, an, an inspiration to any artist, anybody, anybody trying to grind and do their thing. So congrats. Well deserved. And I look forward to seeing what you guys do. And uh, I have a couple questions for you. I'll, I'll be the interviewer. Is it once a week? Is it every day? What's the story? Okay, so great question. Um, it's every day, Monday okay. through Friday, 7 nice. p.m. Now, now, back to you, though. See, what I think is, and Alex and I were having this conversation yesterday off air last night, is what we experimented with last week where you're in the kitchen and you're mm -hmm. cooking it all up. Yeah. Like, we think that's a weekly TV segment. We think we do that like cooking with J-Law. Sure. And, and, and Jay, I have to admit something to you. My yeah. daughter recently went to the store. She bought a bunch of plant-based meat, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. she, she cooked it and I come out and I'm like, Hey, what's for dinner? And she's like, Oh, we made tacos. So they're all sitting there watching me. I go to the stove. I take some of this plant-based meat. I put it in my taco. I eat it. I'm like, Ooh, this is good. This is really good. And they're like, you like it? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, it's plant-based. And bam, like, yeah. I was like, Oh my God. I, I mean, I'm you, dude. I didn't know the difference. And, and once you start like leaning into that, actually that diet, it's, you don't even realize it. You don't even know that you're not really missing the things that you missed, especially when you can kind of, and you know, I was always a crash dieter, right? Like I would always be like, okay, I'm not going to drink with it or I'm not going to do. So my weight, my weight always fluctuate. I have discipline, but then like I would lose and I would start looking good in the mirror and I'd be like, okay, time for pizza again, time for French fries, time for a beer. And then three months would go by and then I could see I pack on the bus. Well, going plant-based is you don't have to diet anymore. I mean, that's your diet. It really, the lifestyle is now your diet and it maintains, you know, your weight, your waist um, you know, length and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to sit there and kind of step on the scale or worry about what you look like. Cause you kind of just, you just turn into what you are on that, on that diet. So congrats, maybe 
you know, and like I said, my show isn't some vegans only show. It's for anybody that wants to just try to maybe put a few more plant based, you know, items on the table, you know, like the paleo diet, the caveman, they still ate 85 percent of their diet was still plant based. I mean, they were hunters and gatherers, but the hunting was only about 15 percent. So uh, even these people that are like, oh, I'm paleo, I eat bacon for every meal. No, they, they didn't do that. They, <laughs> they gathered 85 percent of their their food and hunted 15 percent. So uh, congrats. You on guys. The, uh, you guys remember congrats on, congrats on trying being tricked into uh, yeah. eating, uh based meat. Good for congrats. your daughters. Congrats Somebody in that you. household's got to have something brain brains in their head. Right? <laughs> I'm glad you bring this up though, Scott, because you remember our off air uh, text thread between me and Jason and I challenged oh, yeah. Jason to a burger off yeah. where I would yeah. cook a real meat burger and Jason would do a vegan burger and you and Browner mm -hmm. would be the judges. Right. You'll think that's a great cock segment right there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's a great one. I, and like I said, once my kitchen gets back into like full functioning and I know that we're not going to have any more hiccups, um, it looks like we're going to be able to stay in this place. Hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll kind of know any more extent to anything that they think they've identified. But, uh, you know, um, we're hoping that we don't have to like uproot and move uh, to a different unit or a different apartment or townhouse. So, all right, so um, once so that's all in the clear yeah yeah we're we're a go so so you want to do this you want to yeah. dude, listen listen we're on channel four in san diego and in santa barbara and we're Ooh. on channel 118 in orange county and the same 118 in palos verdes so we're covering nearly a million homes in southern california wow yeah isn't that cool that's great congratulations yeah. guys well thanks that's man. awesome thanks. hey so uh so jason lawhead let's talk about you mm -hmm. sure so this weekend just start me off and then I want to work backwards because I want to hear about Louis CK this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, this weekend coming up the comedy store, La Jolla, give everybody the details. And when I say details, not just show times. Yeah. Is it big crowds? Is it indoors? Is it outdoors? Well, details. Yeah. So one thing I want to correct you on right off the get is there's only one show a night. So if you're oh. going to the shows, it's seven 30 only. Oh, I hope you can make it. So oh, there's I'll only a seven 30 because of liquor laws and whatever. And it is outdoor in the alley. They do have standing heaters dress, you know, sweatshirt warm for it. Uh, the days are a little longer now, obviously. So the sun's out a little longer warming the, the early evening. So it won't be like, frigidly cold uh at showtime um so we you know they they've they've reinstituted reinstituted doing outdoor shows back in uh, early february they had a, a small slice of it back in um august where i headlined a weekend and then they just uh, you know they came back for the shutdown so they were only open for a couple of weekends and i was lucky enough to, to fit in one of my headlining weekends there. And, you know, you know, the comedy store, it's a legendary room inside. Obviously yeah. they're doing it outside, but I joked last time, you know, uh, that I headlined it and the way they have it set up, it's in between a, a tight little alley with the other building that uh, faces Vons. So it's the back alley, not the side alley. Uh, it, it distorts all of the, road noise you can actually hear seagulls above you more than you could hear a car ripping by with a bad muffler so it's great i said when i after the weekend i said the alley behind a comedy store is like better than 80 percent of the rooms in this country i mean really i mean it was funner to perform you know uh, than a lot of just indoor comedy clubs across the country so it's a great little spot uh people loved the last time we were there and i and i've seen that the comedy store has been doing more and more weeks with great comics vicky barbalack was just there um uh you know some some other guys that i know some other and, and they've been packing the place and people love it and it's just dre dressed for like a high school football game and they've got some standing heaters uh the tables are really close but you're socially distanced enough and they're doing a great job and i hope a lot of people coming out tickets are going fast so it's 7 30 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. And um, it's on, obviously, their website, Comedy Store La Jolla, to get some tickets. And, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I got a lot of newer stuff and a lot of fun stuff I've been working on since my last special Pay It Backwards that, that I shot inside of uh, that you guys were all there for and helped me pull off, which was a, a an awesome uh, kind of experience for me. And, you know, uh, you mentioned talking about Louie, and I got to, to work with him, so... Well, well uh, that, let me jump. Let yeah. me jump right in there for yeah. a second. So, okay, so so the comedy store. I stand corrected. I didn't realize it was only uh, one show each night. So that right. changes things. Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday night, seven thirty. So Alex yep. and Browner, just so you guys know, seven thirty. Um, Jay, how many comics before you actually take? Just, just just two. So I'll have you know your regular first guy, and then the middle guy that'll probably be about 
40 minutes worth of show combined and then i'll go up and headline at least 45 to an hour okay. um, after that so okay. that's what so, you're looking at okay so I'll, I'll probably wind up getting down there for everybody that's going to come join us i'm going to probably get down there about eight o'clock so i would mm -hmm. just say this to all the great friends go to the comedy store's website and get these tickets now because i'm sure that seating is limited number one yeah number two here's what i want to say to everybody real quick under normal circumstances i'd say to jay law how many tickets do you have for us to give away i'm not going right. to I'm not going to do that. And here's why we haven't even talked about this, but here's why these comics haven't performed. The comedy store is closed for a really long time. The people who are bartenders and servers and, and who work security there, they all got to get paid. So look, what I'm saying to you is this, you want to come out and have a great time. We're all going to be there Friday night. You want to come support our boy. That's great too. But rather than ask for free ticks, I'm going to ask you the great friends go onto the comedy store website, buy the tickets. Okay. Um, and then we'll all meet there on Friday night, 7.30. Yeah, yeah, and thanks, man, for that, because, you know, more importantly, this is for more of supporting that small business that's been a staple for so long and that has entertained this, this area and has been, I mean, the Comedy Store is one of the greatest comedy brands in the country, and you have one right here in La Jolla. It's been here for so long, and, you know, yeah, everybody's struggling a little bit. So they're trying to get back on their feet and, and like a ball player that takes a hometown discount. I, I've done that as a headliner. I've said, Hey, look, I, I just appreciate opening the stage and let me go work. So what, whatever you need me to, to pay me to make this work, I, I'll take a little, little bit of a pay cut than we usually do to headline clubs. And, and, and like I told some friends and some other people, look, you know, I'm not going to even broach asking for freebies because you know the, the comedy store needs all the income they can get so you like you yeah. said they can pay these people and keep people on payroll and, and do more shows and eventually when they get inside and there's more seats to open up they're going to be calling you up for free tickets like you know if you regularly patronize the place and bringing you in for for other shows and and expanding their their roster and their their nights so uh this is a uh, kind of a one of those things that it's like um civic duty almost to, <laughs> right you know Right. We're helping. You know, we're helping businesses come back to life. It's exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm a small business. The two comics before me are small businesses. All these people that wait tables, they're their own small businesses and, and bartend and, and, the, and the club. So, you know, this isn't an, an improv where, or a funny bone where there's one in every market. This is a landmark club that has one in Hollywood and one in San Diego. And they've been there making people laugh and entertaining them for decades. Jay, we got a few minutes left. We're talking yeah. to Jason Lawhead this afternoon. For those of you that are listening on 1090, Jason Lawhead performing Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, 730 at the Comedy Store. Go to the Comedy Store La Jolla website and buy your tickets now. And we will all be there on Friday night. So come hang out. We'll have a beer. We'll, uh, we'll elbow if you've, mm -hmm. unless you've been vaccinated, then maybe th there's some hugging going on. Jay Law, tell me about this past weekend yeah. going to Tampa to open for Louis C.K. Here's the thing real quick. I think Louis C.K. is hilarious. I've always been a fan of his comedy. Then he got caught up in the world of cancel culture, Me Too, and it turns out he had some things that he did that were pretty gnarly. But he's trying to make a comeback, I, I suppose. I don't really know exactly. So how was working with a comedy legend like Louis C.K.? Yeah, man, I'll tell you, like, you know, after starting my career, I, I worked in a comedy club in Cleveland, starting out as a, as an, you know, open micer. And then, you know, as a comedian, I I've been had access to almost any show I've ever wanted to see. I've had the pleasure of opening for some big names, Bill Burns and other guys. So I've only paid to see four comedians in my whole life. And he's one of them. And I did that at the Balboa theater about 10 years ago, I went to pay to see Louis CK because I didn't know enough guys that knew who he was. And I'd met him briefly in like a hello in New York years ago and in Cleveland. But so the fact that I was able to fall into this gig to, to open for one of the guys that I, one of the four guys I paid for, I mean, I only paid to see John Cleese from Monty Python, Robert, the late Robert Schimmel and Stephen Wright and Louis CK. I mean, that's, that's it. So it's kind of like when a, when a young player, like a Kobe looks up to Jordan and he finally gets to get on the court with him. I mean, I'm not really Kobe. I mean, Louis C.K. is Jordan. I'm more like Derek Fisher. But it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like when one of those guys get to go do that, right? It's it really was. And I kind of just it, it, I kind of fell into it in a way where my wife and I were just trying to get out of here. My parents had went to to Tampa to get a house for a month. They got their vaccinations and wanted to get out of Ohio and and just got a nice condo on the water. And a good buddy of mine, Joe List, who's a hilarious comedian, and he is, he's basically Louis' 
opener on, on theaters out of New York. So he was headlining side splitters in Tampa uh, that weekend. We were going to be in town and I just hit him up saying, Hey man, I see you're going to be in Tampa, yada, yada, yada. And then right before the day, this is a month before we even leave. Then the day before we leave for Tampa, Joe calls me and goes, Hey man, uh, Louie is going to be coming down to do some secret shows on Sunday and Monday. I'm featuring. Would you want to open? He asked me to ask you I, if I knew anybody, I brought your name up and I guess he knew enough of me to, he's maybe heard my name on Burr's podcast or somebody. And he said, yeah, man, ask the guy. And so, uh, yeah, what a thrill. Uh, you know, it was hilarious because Florida, man, they're not in COVID, right? I mean, they had a packed 300 people in a, in a small comedy club. And my opening joke was, man, I was just like, man, this is weird, dude. I feel like saying welcome back, but you guys are like, welcome back to what? Daylight savings time. We haven't been paying, we haven't been paying attention to this. You, guys, <laughs> you know, they, and they were dying, but, uh, it, it was really great. And, you know, it was a great experience. Louis was very complimentary of me and, you know, I hit my marks. I, I got a couple of applause breaks each night on those shows, uh, and, uh, you know, d- doing some of the newer stuff and it, it was great, you know, like there, there's nothing like it. And to see a guy like that work, just keeps you up all night yeah. racking your brain about how, how do I get that good? And, yeah. and that was the most inspirational thing was I didn't sleep Sunday and Monday night in Tampa. Uh, not because I was so high on myself. I was sitting there going, how do you get that good? And he was just working out stuff. And that was the advertisement $20 to see him because, Hey, I'm just working on new material and he crushed. It's so wow. good. I can't wait to see him come out on the other side of this. Um, so yeah, man, right. what a, what a story. Hey, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 730, Jason Lawhead is uh, is working the stage at the Comedy Store La Jolla. He's headlining. We will all be there Friday night. Jay, Boom. we'll see you at the Comedy Store. Can't wait to see you on the store and then on TV, buddy. Congrats, everybody. Yeah, TV. That's going to happen starting next week, by the way. Get ready to start nice. cooking. Nice. All right, bro. Can't wait to Peace. see you guys tomorrow night. Peace. All right, great friends. On a Thursday afternoon, Kaplan and crew. Man, we've had a crazy day today. I got to think, I, I may have to catch my breath a little bit. Jason Lawhead, I think, gives me some anxiety, you know? And I don't even use that phrase, you know, but he, like, makes me a little nuts, especially when he was sitting in his car and his camera was bouncing all over the place. I don't know, man. What do you think? You all right, Browner? You okay? Listen, I had to, I had to refill my, I had to refill my damn Mountain Dew, man. He made me dizzy. <laughs> He's got... He's got like a a little Bill Walton in him as far as like longevity, longevity of comments, you know, he just kind of goes. Yeah, he does go. He does go indeed. Jason, how are you? I'm great. And then like five minutes later. And that's why the Civil War was. (laughs) (laughs) That's why the Civil War was really fought over cotton. Yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) All right. Jason Lawhead coming up this weekend, 730 shows on Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at the Comedy Store. He's our boy. You know, he's been a longtime great friend and contributor to the show. And I hope everybody will come out and support him. For those of you that are in our YouTube chat, okay, I'm telling you guys, we will be there Friday night. I will be there by 8 o'clock, okay? For those of you that are listening on radio, that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be where I'm at, you know? And uh, Browner and Alex say they're coming. Anthony Idol said yesterday he's coming. And so for those of you guys that are ready to get out, have a beer, fist bump, elbow bump, laugh, have a good time, celebrate life. Uh, we'll be there on Friday night supporting our boy Jay law um, coming up in a matter of moments here, Michael Kirshner from Utah sports, Utah man. And we're going to talk about this weekend and our bracket challenge. And I don't know how we did last week. And I had those 50,000 Utah bucks. I know I put a lot of it on San Diego state, which means I did not do well at all. Um, before we get to Michael, I do want to make a quick mention of my man, Gary Cooper, mountain trust mortgage and realty services. I told this story yesterday a friend of mine just bought a house in North Carolina and I asked him how it went. And he said, terrible. And I said, why? And he said, because the broker who should have told me to do all of these things before we actually get to the closing, didn't tell me to do any of those things. And it turned out to be a disaster. Alex, those are the exact same things that Gary's been holding your hand with, you know, um, making sure that you do a bunch of different things to, especially if you're an independent contractor and you don't just have one person paying you, you got a bunch of different jobs out there in the gig economy um, Gary will hold your hand. Gary will make sure you are checking boxes one by one and he'll get the job done for you. Not like this clown in North Carolina. So call my <laughs> man, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. By the way, my friend in North Carolina, I zoom with him every day 
And every day I say the same thing to him. I'm like, yo, you going hunting today? What are you doing? Like the dude moved from San Diego to North Carolina and every day it's like camouflage. <laughs> what are you, turkey hunting or something, man? So anyway. All right. Uh, call Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. Okay, here to brag, I'm sure, about his Syracuse Orange. I think they used to be the Orange Men, I think. Everybody, Michael Kirshner, the co-founder of Uta Sports, who last week warned us that his Syracuse team was about to take down our San Diego State Aztecs, and they did indeed. Hi, Michael. Yeah, that was a... Uh... That was, that was a fun night for me, boys. I enjoyed <laughs> that very much. <laughs> no, they've been uh, they've been impressive. They've been a lot of fun to watch. They they I'll tell you they this was a team that I knew had great potential. They had five great players. Syracuse did, and they just didn't gel uh, until very late in the season. And this is you know this is this is a Jim Beheim special. You sneak into the tournament and then you surprise the world. Here's what I was super jealous about that night obviously the the victory is not is, is what i was jealous of but you know when you have a shooter who's on fire like that never had that here in the tournament and i think last year was our probably our chance to get it with malachi never got to see it this year browner said it perfectly on monday he said just because you can make threes doesn't mean you you're you're a good shooter and i don't think we have necessarily really good shooters on the team but watching buddy Beheim those first two rounds yes yeah. Ridiculous and very jealous of that performance. I mean, Buddy, Buddy went seven for ten against San Diego, and then State, I think he went San Diego, San, State. San Diego State, and then I think he went uh, like six for thirteen against West Virginia. Uh, I mean, the guy's just unconscious, and he is a great, great natural shooter. And the thing that's really impressed me about him recently is he, you know, obviously he, he's always if he's if you leave him open, he's going to drain it. But he's he's now has the ability to either roll off screens and hit you know, fairly contested shots. And now he's creating his own shots, which makes him really, really dangerous. And, you know, I, 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 I hate to even look that far ahead, but uh, you're starting to hear a little, a little bit of chatter about a potential uh, hard look at the NBA. Ooh, eh, look, look, what he did the first two rounds was great. I think he, I think the test for him now will be if he can now crush opponents, they should be. Because people were looking at it as more of an even game, but San Diego State had well, coming into the game had good defense. West Virginia, because of Bobby Huggins, is a dog fight regardless of what you do. You, they're gonna play defense, and he smoked both of them. Mm -hmm. So now against this next opponent, who he's coming in with a hot hand, can he maintain that hot hand against what people would say are lesser opponents? I think that's really gonna start putting a Steph Curry energy to what he's doing because the way he's making shots, you're not gonna be able to guard that. Yeah, but you just know, just know one thing. You know, I think a lot of people will look at the brackets right now the same way they looked at Syracuse, San Diego State, and most people in America went Syracuse, and then they saw Syracuse, West Virginia, and they may have been a little you know like gun shy on that because West Virginia was a three, but they're taking on Houston, who's the two seed, so it still qualifies if Syracuse wins. It still qualifies as a really big upset. Well, they're 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 right now six point dogs, so. Um, Vegas is not giving them the respect. I mean, look, I don't know anything about Houston. You talk about East Coast bias. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I have East Coast bias because I I can't. I never saw a Pac-12 game all year because I can't. We didn't up. either. Don't worry. I can't stay either. up that late. Right? I watched San Diego State beat UCLA. That's the only game I watched in the Pac-12. Right. So like games that happen on the West Coast, like we just don't see those guys play that often. And like Houston, uh, I haven't seen Houston play. I've been reading up about them. They seem, you know, look, they beat Wichita State. They've beaten some good teams. Vegas likes them as a six point favorite. Um, Vegas is Vegas usually knows more than the average Joe, which I consider myself to be. But I think the way this team, uh, the Syracuse team is playing right now, I think they're, they're, they're a very live underdog. So buddy Bayham gives me a, uh, a, what when you talk about the NBA? He gives me a big Jimmer for debt vibe. And the reason I say that is Jimmer Fredette was the most ridiculous scorer I've ever seen in college basketball in person. Buddy Beheim, I don't think is at that level, but it's yeah. how many NBA teams are going to let Buddy Beheim shoot the ball 15 to 20 times a game? Yeah, no, I, I, I would have never thought, I, I think it was Vital, who you always have to take a little bit with a grain of salt. Oh, said, this guy's a surefire NBA player. And, and um, look, I saw McNamara, McNamara didn't even get, you know, McNamara, who was the original Buddy Bayham, didn't even yeah. get a 
didn't even get a look. I think he go back further. Go, yeah. go back further. Not Syracuse, but think about a Bobby Hurley. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Back to, going well, that back. That car crash, that car crash really, really hurt his career. So I would say that car crash really did more damage to him than his actual skill set because he was a decent point guard. But that car crash really derailed him. You know what? Buddy Beheim reminds me a lot of Mike Dunleavy Jr. at the next level. He's not going to be super athletic. Defensively, he'll be in the right spot. He's still going to score it on. And he can make shots for you. He will never be a dominant shooter at the next level, but he will be able to make shots. He's a great player on a championship team, like a seventh or eighth guy. Yeah, you know what's scary, too, about the Syracuse team is that, you know, I, coming into the tournament, I would not have said Buddy's our best player. Uh, Quinty Guerrier, I would have said, is our best player. Uh, Alan Griffin's had a really good season. He's been, you know, and neither one of those guys have done much in this tournament. But trust me, like, you know, against Houston on, on Saturday night, like either one of those two guys can go off. And I think I mentioned on the show last week, Malik Dolajai, the kid from Sylvania. I mean, that's the, that guy is the heart and soul of this team. I mean, he, he is one of the best big man passers. Uh, you know, he takes charges. Uh, if he can stay out of foul trouble um, and, you know, all five, you know, all five Syracuse starters can stay in the game, uh, not have to go to their bench, even though their bench is greatly improved from earlier this season. This is a very, very dangerous team because, you know, you've got Gary A, Griffin, both, you know, really good, um, really good three, four type players. And then Joe Girard, the third, who's our point guard, who, uh, believe it or not, has the um, most points in New York State high school history, who's just really had a terrible season, but started to come on a little bit in the San Diego State game and played very well in the West Virginia game. Um you know, you really just need two of those guys to step up and, and really you're not going to need to get 26, 27, 28 points at a Buddy Bayham every night. All right, we're talking to Michael Kirshner. He is the co-founder of Uda Sports, U-D-D-A, Uda Man. Now listen, we have been telling everybody to download this Uda app and play in these betting games. Now it doesn't require real money. You're not going to lose any real money. It's all what are called Uta bucks. They're like fictitious dollars. I guess you can buy more on the on the app, but really they give them to you and you can spin the wheel every day you go and you can pick them up that way. You can refer friends. You can get Uta bucks. So lots of ways to, to acquire Uta bucks. And then you can go ahead and start making these wagers. Now, this week is a really, the, the, the NCAA tournament is very interesting for people who, at least for those of us on the West Coast, who didn't really follow college basketball this year other than San Diego State. What the Pac-12 has done, Michael, is quite amazing. At one point, they were 9-0 and in this tournament. And of the Sweet 16 teams, there are four that are from the Pac-12. Um, and throw in Gonzaga as well. I mean, West Coast, very, very well represented here. Any of these games that you like a lot at all? Because Syracuse, Houston's an 11-2. How about UCLA, Alabama is an 11-2? Well, that's for me. Sorry. I, uh, no, I, I, I think, I think there are a lot of, I think there are a lot of really interesting games, right? Because you have, um, first of all, the, the Loyola Chicago, Oregon state game, uh, is a really interesting game. You got two very high seeds, right? Uh, nobody, like everybody thought Loyola was kind of a fluke when they went to the final four a couple of years ago, but, but, um, you know, who knows? I mean, that, there's no reason to think they won't be able to do it again. The, 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 um, you know, Oral Roberts, I, I, I don't think they're going to match up well against Arkansas. I think I think that should uh, I think Oral Roberts Cinderella season is going to come to an end. But you're right. There are a lot of compelling games. Um, I think Gonzaga has proven to be the best team in the country. Kind of wrote them off again because I didn't see them and I wasn't convinced that they played real good competition. But man, have they looked good. And to me, the most surprising thing about the tournament so far has been, um, you know, listen, the ACC has been ACC didn't have a good tournament, but really the Big Ten. Um, I thought, you know, four, even five of the top five, uh, top 10 teams in the country were going to come out of the Big Ten. And man, did they disappoint. So, frauds. Yeah, the total frauds. And that's what made this season really interesting because you didn't play a lot of out-of-conference games. So really what happened in the Big Ten is you had a lot of what turned out to be slightly above average teams just going at each other all season. Um, you know, Michigan, I think, is still very dangerous. I've seen Florida State play a lot. I think that's going to be a great game. Um, but it's, it's, this has been a really interest. I mean, there've been more upsets in this tournament than I think in any tournament in history, uh, just based on seeding. So it's been fascinating. I think think that we're overthinking it with, with certain teams. Like, so there's three, one seeds left, right? I know Browner picked Illinois and a bunch of people picked Illinois, but 
Gonzaga is like just crushed every single team they've played this year. Are we simply overthinking it because it's the bracket and it's March Madness, or are they simply the best team in the in the tournament? I mean, the good the, the best thing about this tournament is you have to be the best team at the time to get through, right? Because it's because you essentially have to win. Uh, five games in a row against all good competition. Generally, the winner of the tournament is the best team at that time. So we, we'll find out. Um, again, like you, you, you got to trust. I always tell people trust Vegas. Usually, they set good lines. Clearly, there have been a lot of upsets this this tournament, so that may not really be the case this year. But Vegas loves Vegas loves Gonzaga, and there's no reason not to trust Vegas on this one. I mean, they've they've clearly looked to be the best team. Of the- I think the problem with this tournament is that it was it was poorly seated because I think the committee like us did we didn't get to see a lot of games we didn't know who was playing who we didn't know if this team was playing we didn't know if this team dropped out this guy got sick so I think they were just kind of plugging things in that's why La Jolla Chicago was so poorly uh, 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 placed in the tournament and or we're getting, Roberts or Robert so now we're getting these results because I don't I think you are kind of correct about the Big Ten but. Also, not really, because the Big Ten had great players in it. Illinois got beat by a better team because their coach was, I don't know, game planning and then executing the game plan while the Illinois coach was like, hey, you guys should beat them. They're Loyola, Chicago. We're Illinois. And that's what the game looked like. So if you watched a couple of these games, you could see some guys just got out coached. They had a bad day. So... I, this tournament has a lot I mean, of upsets, come on, but I was prepared for this. That's a sister gene effect. You, you didn't. You're not giving it. You're not giving any credit to the sister gene effect, no, dude. Yeah, zero dude. credit. Zero credit. Zero. She's zero. The only she reason a basket ain't got a rebound. Stop it with the sister dude. gene bogusness. John, we read the prayer. Sister Jean, she had a game plan sister, in the prayer. She told the angels what to do in the prayer. Sister Gene is for selling socks and bobbleheads. She ain't for no basketball. Okay. Stop it. She's a well, nice little are. cute old lady to put on TV because it's a great story during a timeout when you coming or going. They ain't got no, no basketball. Sexist. Their coach outcoached. Their coach outcoached the Illinois coach. It was embarrassing. You know they what ran you sound the same like? play 10 times in a row. You know what you sound like when it comes to Sister Jean? Come on, Mirror. What? <laughs> <laughs> I what? Hate her. I hate her. Come on, man. Here we go. I'm not messing with Sister Jean. I'll tell you Sister that. I'm a, I'm a Jewish kid from New York City, but I'm not messing with Sister Jean. Like, <laughs> God bless her. Uh, uh, but the man from the south side of Chicago, he'll mess with Sister Jean. He don't care. Sister Jean ain't got – listen, Sister Jean, I ain't scared of Sister Jean. I've been, I didn't, I didn't had uh, people hit my hands with rules before. All right. Michael Kirshner from Uta Sports. He's their co-founder. Michael, um, USC, Oregon, a six versus a seven. What's the line here? All of a sudden, or uh, USC more so has caught a lot of fire, I feel yeah. like. And they got these Mobley brothers that are wow. and the, the one who's the young one is like the real superstar. They say that guy might be the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I love uh, watching that team. Curious. But let's, let's play a quick game. Why don't you guess the line? Guess the line in that game. I'd say USC is a three-point favorite. Anybody else want to take a guess? I'm I, I'm not good with lines. Me neither. It's a good guess. They're two-point favorites. Oh. Um, so, you know, look, this is a uh, a six seed going against a uh, a seven seed. Should be a good game. But yeah, those brothers, man, they have been fun to watch. You realize their father is uh, on the coaching staff. Oh, don't you do that! Don't what? you do that! Do that's nothing wrong. That's nothing wrong with that at all. I didn't zero. Say there's anything wrong with it? I said that. Did you know that? I can't wait till Levar Ball is coaching the Hornets. Yeah. Did you? Did you not? I mean, I didn't know that. I didn't know that about the Mobley brothers. I had to read up on them. And they're like, yeah, his dad's on the coaching staff. I'm like, oh, how you interesting. You know, Buddy Bayham's dad's on the Syracuse coaching staff. I no did not way. know that. I Thank had no go. idea. It was frowned yeah. upon how the Mobleys got to USC. Oh, it is. I, I thought that's what you were getting at. So no, I apologize. I even, no, I don't even know the history. Yeah, it was frowned upon that these these two highly recruits and this one kid is like amazing, and now they chose USC out of nowhere, and people oh, found that it to like be the, strange. Like the Full House lady. Oh. Yes, no, no, they didn't pay to get in, but they they got their father to give them the coaching staff. Job. Yeah, right. And so, so then reverse. therefore it was reverse. Yeah. Instead so of their parent giving money, the university gave the parent a job. Right. And that was frowned upon <laughs> and people said, oh, there's no way those kids would have went there if it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're going to go with your dad's the coach. Duh. Mark. 
Uh, hey, let me let me uh, let me let me pitch a couple of contests we got going. This okay, weekend. do it. So, we got we got about three minutes to go here. So I'm on the Uta app right now. Yeah. What what contest should we jump into this week? So we got a great free to play contest. Uh, that you know I encourage everybody to enter this one. It's the NCAA Sweet 16 Pick 'em All. You're just picking all the games against the spread. You'll get a record at the end of the weekend. Uh, that's a fun one. You just got to pick pick winners against the spread. You pick all the games. Uh, the Sweet 16 games are all listed now. After when it gets down to the Elite Eight, make sure you go back there to uh, to pick the next round of games. So that's a fun one. The other one we have a uh, a paid contest, which again you're entering with Uta Bucks. You're entering um, you're entering 2,500 Uta Bucks. It's an NCAA um, bankroll contest. Um, games that uh, go throughout the weekend. So we'll, we'll go uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This is such a weird year. I, so I, weird. I, I keep wanting to say Thursday through Sunday, but this year it's Saturday through Tuesday. Um, and it's the traditional bankroll contest. You'll get 50,000 bankroll bucks. You spend them how you want. You can do the spread, the money line, uh, the over under, and whoever has the most bankroll bucks at the end of the weekend will win that one. So two good contests. We actually also have an NBA contest going this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday games. Uh, so if you can't get your fix on March Madness, you can still play the NBA games. Uh, same deal there with the bankroll. You get 50,000 bankroll bucks and pick all the NBA games throughout the weekend, however you like. Uh, and uh, minimum guaranteed prize on that one is also 25,000 euro bucks. I, um, I right now am just making all of my picks. In, in the, these are the Saturday games? Yeah, Saturday, March 27th, right. I've just made all my picks on the Saturday games. Okay. I'm feeling great about these, right? I didn't know Loyola Chicago was a seven point favorite over Oregon state. Oregon state yeah. just won the PAC 12 tournament. That's why they snuck in. Yeah. Well, listen, they're well, red hot. I know. Uh, Oral Roberts is getting 11 and a half from Arkansas. Taking Oral Roberts. Gonzaga has given 13 to Creighton. And as much as I want to see like a competitive game, I don't think so. Gonzaga, Do you guys know Creighton? This is the first time they ever made the sweet 16. No, I didn't know that. I just felt like they've been in the Final Four before. You always hear Crane in the tournament. They've this is the first time they made the Sweet Sixteen. I I took Crane in that game, and and the Big East was was sneaky good this year. They had a number of like above average good teams, and Creighton won the Big East. Uh, didn't win the tournament, but won the regular season. I'm hoping they can keep it close. That's more of like a hope pick than an actual like well handicapped pick. I I don't know. Thirteen points seemed like a lot of points for a good team, but you know we'll see. I don't all feel right, good about I'm in. That. I'm all in. I've entered. If you go to UDA, UDDA, join the NCAA Sweet 16, pick them all. Michael, we'll talk to you next week. Good luck, man. Thanks, gentlemen. Enjoy the tournament. All right, we got to wrap things up. We got to wrap it up. Got to got to get out of here. Got to go do other stuff today. Everybody have a great night. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel because Grumpy Old Men tonight, Grumpy Old Men with Kurt Pavacqua and Hank Bauer coming up. It'll air at 6 o'clock, right, Browner? 6 o'clock? Yes. By the way, they already seem extremely grumpy. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I saw like, Hank I just on had, here right now. I just saw Hank, and I just heard Bavacqua, and they both sound pissed. Hank wouldn't even make eye contact with me. He's so pissed at you. He's so pissed. What'd at you me. do now? So oh, pissed. Oh god! They just expect me to like work for them nonstop. They're like, "Why aren't you selling our show? Why haven't we made it to radio yet?" I'm like, "Guys, I'm too busy. I'm one person." You know, so they're pissed. Have at fun, me. Browner. Peace. Yeah, great.